As an invited speaker for many professional surgical associations on bariatric surgery and quality, and as chair of the monthly quality forum for the American College of Surgeons, Dr. Morton has helped to better outcomes for the obese, lower mortality rates, and raise the bar for surgical quality throughout the nation. The 2012 National Physician of the Year Award for Clinical Excellence, Dr. John Maganya Morton. Dr. Yes. Morton, Ron had this gastric bypass and it obviously worked for him, but it may not work for everybody. What should people know in terms of that surgery? Well, first of all, I want to congratulate Ron on taking that step forward because it takes a lot of courage to come forward and do something about your health. And it, this is a serious operation, but desperate times call for desperate measures. In a lot of ways, surgery is kind of the first responder to this public health epidemic. We have potentially 12 million patients who may uh, benefit from the surgery. And in short, the patients who benefit are those with a BMI, body mass index, over 40, or a body mass index over 35. In many ways, he's a whistleblower. A Stanford doctor says prescription drugs have one side effect virtually no one knows about. They're making people fat. He adds too many of his fellow physicians are doling out these drugs and not warning the patients. So the family went to Stanford for help, and that's where they met Dr. John Morton. He was appalled by the overload of meds and suggested something else, gastric bypass surgery. She would be what I would call a higher risk patient. Um, but. I did realize that she needed something. Prescription drugs can certainly cause you to be obese, and it's something to be aware of and uh, watch out for. Most kids get repeated ear infections. According to the International Journal of Obesity, it's 80 to 90 percent of toddlers up to age three, and antibiotics is the most popular remedy. Morton is the director of bariatric or weight loss surgery at Stanford. He says essentially everyone has good and bad bacteria in the stomach. Introducing too many antibiotics into the body may throw that balance of bacteria out of whack and disrupt the process of digesting food and metabolizing vital nutrients, especially for kids. It's at its most vulnerable point. And at that point in time, even a few courses of antibiotics can upset that balance. And you may not have the bacteria you need to have good, healthy weight down the road. I think it's a, it's a nine month uh, celebration that maybe goes too far. When culture kicks in, sometimes so do the calories. We see that, um, you know, in Hispanic cultures, um, for sure, you know, where mom is supposed to gain a lot of weight. One out of every five pregnant women is now obese, gaining. It's about 50 to 60 pounds when the recommended weight gain is only about 15 to 25. He adds women should only be eating 300 extra calories a day. When you carry extra weight, uh, it does predispose you to developing diabetes. And to giving birth early, which could lead to a C-section, as well as high blood pressure. And the consequences go way beyond mom. Big moms end up having big babies. And when you have a bigger baby, that baby's at future risk for becoming obese. People try many ways to keep down their weight, but sometimes the only option appears to be surgery. And that may have surprising benefits for friends and family. Dr. John Morton performed Wisner's surgery. I really do think that obesity is a family disease. Morton directs bariatric surgery at Stanford University. We all gather around the table to enjoy a meal together, and we learn lessons when we do that. This was no worthy in that these patients were able to to accomplish that just by coming to the same visits that the bariatric surgery patient did. The so-called halo effect. I think most of the family members who came wanted to help out their spouse or whoever, or whoever it might be, and they wanted to support them, and they supported them by making healthy food choices, exercising together. Dr. John Morton is leading a new study at Stanford. It doesn't in involve rerouting any anatomy or cutting any tissue. What we're doing quite simply is blocking the vagus nerve, which is a very important nerve that helps process how we feel full and aids us in digestion. After being implanted, the patients are required to wear a belt all day beneath their clothing. That keeps the device activated and monitors progress. It's like putting on your belt every morning and cinching it up. Clearly one place it's going to work on is impacting how patients feel hungry, so patients will feel less hungry 
when they have the device on. Dr. John Morton of Stanford University does both gastric bypass and lap band surgery. Let He's optimistic about the new procedure. Clearly, the, uh, the risk profile of this particular procedure, V-block, is, appears to be less than other procedures. The benefit, by the same token, might be less as well. There's not going to be as much weight loss as we see with gastric bypass, but again, even a modest amount of weight loss is going to give patients a lot of health benefits. For weight loss surgery is booming in the United States. 140,000 procedures are done each year. But following surgery, doctors and patients have reported an intoxicating observation. People report they feel tipsier quicker after gastric bypass surgery. A single glass of red wine will make a, a gastric bypass patient legally intoxicated. Dr. John Morton headed up the study. He says with weight loss surgery, doctors close most of the patient's stomach and shorten the small intestine. That means the alcohol can now bypass much of the stomach's powerful gastric juices and get into the bloodstream more concentrated than normal. It's a quick jolt to the system and uh, patients aren't always aware of it. So that's why we want to make patients aware of it uh, so they know never to drink and drive. Well, here's another benefit. It makes them smarter. Stanford researchers found gastric bypass surgery improved a patient's ability to remember, to think through problems, and pay attention to details. We saw pretty big improvements across the board for people. Dr. John Morton headed up the research. He presented his findings late today at the American College of Surgeons annual meeting held this year at Moscone Center in San Francisco. This is the first study of its kind, and so it's going to open up a lot of other avenues for research. Get rid of that fat and your brain benefits. We know this operation, gastric bypass, really improves insulin resistance. It cures diabetes 82% of the time. And I think at the end of the day, that's really the main reason why these patients had such a big improvement in cognition after surgery. For adolescent bariatric surgery, there has been a tremendous increase over the last few years. Since 1997, we've actually seen a five-fold increase. And now, a year and a half later, Kylie has lost 110 pounds. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. You did it. I did. I'm happy now. <laughs> I think it's definitely saved my life. Clearly, there's always risk involved with different approaches, but this is a lot like someone who's drowning. We don't wait to build them a bridge. We throw them a lifeline, and that's what this operation provides.